going to start a new series today. By the way, welcome everybody watching online. Can we give it up for everybody watching online today? You're amazing, and um, you're going to get to join in with this. We're starting a series called The Chosen. Um, the Chosen is a TV series that came out a few years ago um, based on the Bible. And uh, it, I, I, can I just tell you, if I'm honest, um, I don't normally like Christian film, okay? Because if we could just be honest in the room, for the most part, Christian film in years past has been cheesy, you know what I'm talking about. Love the message, love the point behind it, but it could just be cheesy. You know, you're like, ah, uh, a little bit of cringe going on and like, what is, what is that? But this TV series really broke the mold in so many ways, especially when it comes to depicting Bible characters and depicting what took place in the Bible. Um, it's really based around the disciples, the chosen, and uh, you get to see their, their characters. I think, just let me say this, and I'll probably say this every week because this is very important as we go through this series, is that when you watch the series, every Everything that takes place in the TV series did not take place in the Bible. Okay, there's a lot of blanks filled in. There's a lot of different uh, dramatization towards it um, to really build a framework around the character. Now they built the character profiles based on what we do know in Scripture. For example, in episode one, season one, um, you see Peter getting in a fight. That didn't happen in Scripture. However, what did happen in Scripture is later on he tries to cut off a centurion's ear. So we might know that Peter's ready to fight. You know, um, they didn't. They, so so you have to be careful to not not take the TV series as, oh yeah, the Bible says this, you know, you're talking to a friend and you say, well, yeah, that happened in the Bible, but be careful to make sure that it did happen in the Bible. This is more to build a context around that. Everybody with me? It's done very well and it's very accurate in a lot of different ways. Uh, and we're, what we're going to do is over the next eight weeks, we're going to dive into each episode. And so outside and even online, we'll put a QR code up here. You can get the digital version of this. This is a guide. And what this does is it has each episode on it and it gives you the biblical references for each episode. So what my challenge to you and us as a church is, is that you would go home um, this week and start, if you didn't get a chance to watch episode one, watch episode one. It's free to watch this um, on a couple different platforms and you'll see, we'll give you the resources here and online. Um, but we want you to go home and then watch episode two because I want you to watch the episode and then come Sunday when we talk about the episode. But you'll see on the guide there's bible references that refer to that specific episode and then reflection questions for you to think afterwards so this what this does is it's engaging you in the word of god and then also engaging you in really a binge worthy tv show um, and we're going to be going through season one um, and i think it's going to be really practical it's going to really be uh, hopefully impactful and helpful for for you just understand that um, episodes one two and three they're building a lot of content text for the entire series. So probably episodes one, two, and three have the least amount of biblical reference to it because they're building the context. Okay, everybody with me? And so episode one and the title of the sermon today is I have called you by name. I have called you by name. Let me, let me pray as we just dive into God's word. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for this TV series even. And God, what you've been able to do through it and the lives that have been impacted through it. But most importantly, God, the lives that have been impacted through your word. And God, that is my prayer, is that our lives this next eight weeks would be impacted by your word as it challenges us to get into your word, to read it, and your word to read us. Because we believe that your word is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating our bone and marrow thoughts. And God, it, it separates, God, those things in our life, and it does a work in our heart. It doesn't return to you void. God, and it transforms us. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we're going to watch a clip in just a second. But first of all, episode one, what it really does is, um, is you're beginning to get a look at a few different disciples. Today, you're going to see um, Mary as a disciple, uh, Mary Magdalene. 
um, and she was a she had a very stained life. But I think one of the coolest things about episode one is is you begin to see um, that the disciples are real human beings, that they were real people. Um, that maybe you grew up traditionally, and there was apostles and there was saints on the wall, depicted on the wall in the church building. But you have to know that it, it depicts Peter, it depicts um, Matthew, it depicts Mary, and they were they were normal people that God called normal people that God chose. And that's good news for you and me because I'm normal and I've got, I've got a temper. Peter had a temper, you know, and I think, I think that's one thing that, we, that, that this series does is it helps us realize that these are just real people um, and we're real people. Um, so this, is, this, clip, this next clip is the opening of episode one, uh, season one. So check it out. Okay, so this is, this is Mary as a little girl. I want to read to you really quickly um, Isaiah chapter 43. Um, because Isaiah 43 is where exactly where they were quoting from, um, the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 43, this is going to be our scripture today. Verse 1 says this, But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, and whom I formed and I made. Amen. I want you to know today three different things as we walk through the next few clips. First of all, you need to know today that you were formed. Isaiah says it right here. You were formed. You were handcrafted. You were made. You were, society and culture does not form you. Society does not say, get to say who you are. Only God gets to say who you are. The one who formed you, the one who created you, the one who handcrafted you. Not only were you made, but he made you with a purpose. Every single person in this room, I'm not just talking, I'm not just talking to even the people who are saved. I'm talking to every person in this room. You were created and handcrafted. Even if your parents didn't plan you, he planned you. You were formed. And he formed a purpose in you. 
You have a purpose and destiny on your life. You have a calling on your life. There is something that God designed you to do, to be a part of. There is other lives that God uh, designed for you to impact. You are not a mistake. He formed you. He is the God who says, you are precious in my eyes. Before you were ever born, he knew you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that a beautiful thing to know that you weren't just, you didn't just appear one day. You're not just a clump of cells. You were formed by a heavenly father. You were formed by a creator who knows exactly what he's doing, the perfect creator when he created you. Every little characteristic about your life that you thought was a flaw, he designed you. But the problem and the tension of the story comes is maybe you don't think that way. Maybe you haven't realized or caught the revelation. Maybe you even grew up in church and know that, yes, God is my creator and God created the heavens and the earth and it's this great big story, but you haven't brought that great big story into your life personally. To know that he formed you, he crafted you. And you might sometimes feel like, yeah, but I don't have a purpose. I know Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I have a purpose and a plan for you, declares the Lord, one to, not, not to harm you, but for a hope and a future, but I don't feel like I have a purpose. I feel like my life is mundane and I'm going around in circles. I feel like I don't have any value anymore. Yes, I had a purpose at one point, but all the things I did and all the things that happened to me has disqualified me from that purpose. And so my value to the kingdom of God and my value to Jesus and my value to God is not, I'm not valuable anymore. I don't, I'm ruined um, because of the things that have taken place in my heart. I, it all started out good, but now it's over. I don't think I can ever, I can ever get back. I don't think I can ever step forward. I'm just going to now go through life. And when you look at the mirror, when you think about your life, you don't view your life the same way God views you. I want you to know today that you're formed. And we all experience that tension because we live in a fallen world. We experience shame. We experience condemnation. We experience false identity in our life, thinking that we're somebody that we're not because of what people said about us. And this is one thing that's great about this episode um, in episode one is that it really depicts Mary's past. It really depicts the, the stains and the shame that Mary experienced. You see here in the video clip in the first instance as a little girl, but then you experience all the stuff that she went through along the way. So let's check out these next two video clips. <laughs> Thus said the Lord, who formed you, O oh Jacob. And you created you, O oh Israel. Fear not.
So Mary Magdalene is, of course, scriptural character. And we do know that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. And what it's depicting here is the things that happened to her in her life is what would have led her to those things. And we see that she, obviously there's this internal struggle. And maybe some of you are experiencing a similar internal struggle. Maybe some of you are experiencing some of the same feelings and some of the same thoughts. Maybe not exactly the, the same things happened to you, or maybe similar things did. And because of what's happened, it is now, it is now um, writing the story of your future because you've lived out of that place of hurt and you've lived out of that place of pain. But what Isaiah 43 is so clear in saying is not only has he formed you, but he has also redeemed you. He's redeemed you. He's not only formed you and created you. So when I feel like, listen, when I feel like that, yes, maybe I've been created, but my original purpose, I can't, there's nothing I can do anymore. I, I can't, I have no more purpose. He's redeemed it. He has not only formed the purpose, but he's because of Jesus has redeemed your purpose. In other words, everything that the enemy's stolen, every stain in your life has been redeemed by him. He can take and this is my own story everything that I threw away he picked me up out of the dust just like he did Mary Magdalene who was the stain of the community who would have been looked down on culturally and 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 called me to himself and he wants to do the same in our lives is he wants to take us from where we've been and he wants to call us to himself he's redeemed you he's formed you And he's also called you by name. He hasn't just put out a job posting saying, hey, is there anybody out there who wants to follow me? He hasn't just put a a poster out to say, hey, is there any followers out there? No, he's called you individually by name. He said, I want you. I died for you. You are the apple of my eye. My heart is after you. I've called you by name. The Hebrew word for name there, not just mean, it doesn't mean your, 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 your name or your family name. It also means your reputation. Can you imagine? Whatever my reputation, whatever my past has been, he's called me by name he's called me even when i've been in the middle of my mess do you see that god doesn't wait for you to be fixed up god doesn't wait for you to be a finished product before he calls you he calls you even in the middle of your reputation he calls you even in the middle of your mess and he calls you by name watch this last clip and then we'll close So did it work? I'm sorry, did it? Elias? We should talk, huh? Yep. Leave me alone. Oh, what, huh? It's going to scratch me too. Oh, come on, not now. So I'll see. Not now. She smells anyway. I don't know what else I can do to help you. Give me that. Lots of it. That's not going to solve your problems. It's meant to distract from them. No more preaching. Just give it to me. Lilith, please listen to what I'm saying. That's not real. Don't touch me. 
Lily. Lily, Lily, are you okay? I... I have to go. Leave me alone. says the Lord who created you and he who formed you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. stand to your feet with me as we close up this morning God's going to do a lot as we go through this series but maybe today it's just a, a prophetic word that God wants to speak to your life maybe it's may, maybe maybe this message and this TV series and this episode specifically isn't just a general Sunday morning sermon maybe it is a prophetic statement that God is trying to speak directly into who you are and not who they said you are and not who you think thought you were maybe your life has been stained we see Mary we see Mary Magdala pop up many times in scripture Mary was the first one to realize that Jesus has, has, has resurrected and to see Jesus resurrected. Most scholars believe that Mary Magdala was the same Mary that came and anointed Jesus' feet with oil and perfume, which would have been worth a year's wages to her. She, she poured out everything because of she realized that everything that I am, everything that I've been through means nothing because I've just met the one who formed me, because I've just met the one who redeemed me. I've just met the one who called me by name. I want you today to experience the God who calls you by name despite what you've done and despite what you've been through, despite the unbelief that you've had in the past, despite it, despite the big story, the, the big story becomes so personal today. He's called you by name. Can you close your eyes with me before we close? And let me just ask this question in the room and online today. Maybe today you've never made a decision to turn around like Mary just did and come into the embrace of God who says, I've called you by name. You've never said yes to him. And today you want to make the greatest decision of your life to say, Jesus, I am yours. 
I accept your invitation. Jesus, I accept you because you've accepted me, because you've accepted me for who I am, even when I've been messed up, even when my life has been stained, even when my marriage has been on the rocks, even when my anger has been at the height, even when I've been full of lust, and even when I've been full of addiction, and even when I've been full of all these other priorities, you were there calling me by name. You've never left me, never forsaken me, but today I'm coming to you because you've come to me and you are the Lord of my life. Maybe today that decision is is your decision. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pray for you and we're gonna all pray in the room. But if you're making that decision for the first time, all I want you to do, no more, no less, is just put a hand in the air and say, that's me because I wanna know who we're praying for today, making that decision. And online, we're gonna have some resources for you as well. Yeah. Can everybody just pray this with me? Say, Jesus, I come to you. Thank you for dying for me, for forming me, for redeeming me. Thank you for calling me by name. I'm yours. I surrender to you today, Jesus. You are the Lord of my life. I'm all in. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, today we just thank you that you formed us, you created us, you crafted us, and you call us by name, Jesus. You call us by name even when we're in the middle of our mess. You call us by name not the names that everybody else has called us, not the names that we've put on ourselves, but you called us by our name, the one you gave us, the design and the destiny and the purpose that you gave us. You call us by name. Come on, let's just worship today. Let's just let him speak to us as we close out. And if there's anything you need prayer for, some of our prayer team members are gonna be here on the sides. We'd love to pray for you. Come on, let's worship.